Welcome to Madeira, Portugal. That's right, new country, new haircut. Let's go out for a little walk and I'll tell you why I'm here, some of the pros and cons of living in Madeira, and what it means for this channel and my future travel plans. Let's do it. So yes, guys, I moved to Madeira, the home or the birthplace of Cristiano Ronaldo. And in fact, you can see him here, or at least something that's supposed to be him, the statue outside of his museum. Don't really see the huge resemblance, to be honest, but everyone comes to take their photo here anyway. But yes, I have moved to Funchal, Madeira. And before we get started, let me just show you this view, because it's sometimes views like this that I see, and I just remind myself why I moved to this place. This kind of like confirms it for me. Look at that. The view over Funchal, sprawling up the mountain, absolutely stunning on what is an absolutely stunning day. Gorgeous, right? Cannot beat that. But yes, here we are in Portugal. I took so much of a break that I got a bit nervous to start filming again because it's a little bit different filming in Europe to Asia. I mean, everyone stares at you here. In Asia, no one really cares. But here it's a bit more awkward. So uh, I've been putting it off as long as I can. But now we're caught up. I don't really have a choice. <laughs> so here I am making this video. All right, we'll start with the pros. Number one of the pros, I don't really need to explain it, do I? But Madeira is stunning, absolutely stunning. And it's not just stunning in Funchal, it's stunning all over the island. And what I love most about it is you have so many different types of landscapes and microclimates. You can feel like you're on Mars in a Martian landscape where everything is dry and arid. You can be up in the mountains, have rugged mountains like you're in Switzerland. You can have the subtropical, charming city of Funchal, or you can feel like you're in Jurassic Park in these amazing jungly feeling landscapes. I love it. And you really cannot beat that all in one place on such a small island, 50 kilometers squared, roughly 300,000 people. It is actually amazing and a huge perk. One of the main reasons that I'm here after traveling so much and going to all these amazing places, I think my expectations have risen so much that Maybe I get bored easily, or maybe I, I need more to get my heart going a little bit, if you understand what I mean by that. And when you have places like this, even just coming here, guys, this is right in the heart of Funchal, just by the marina, actually. But just this view, where you have the clouds hanging on the mountains, you've got the Say Cathedral over there, the ocean, of course. I mean, come on, it is. It is amazing. And on the back of that, and the concept of getting bored, there are so many things you can do here, so many activities, whether that's hiking on the Levadas, which are the irrigation channels that are scattered all over the island with amazing hiking, like world-class hiking opportunities, or whether that's going out on the boats and seeing the dolphins, the whales, whether that's playing tennis or paddle or going to the beach or whatever, whatever, paragliding, whatever you want to do, you have an option for it here. There is so much going on. You will never, never be bored on this island. No matter what your interest is, there will always be something that you can find. The other thing, of course, on the pros is the climate. I mean, it's not just today that the weather is amazing. It's subtropical, so it's warm all year round. Of course you have days where it's raining or it's a bit windy or it's cold, but in general, the weather is very, very good, especially compared to the UK. I mean, there is no comparison. The winter here is like a UK summer. Today is in March, end of March, and it's mid 20s. The winter, maybe you're gonna get 15 on a bad day, but it can be, you know, 18 to 20. This winter has been amazing in terms of climate. And well, of course, having been in Asia for so long, it's a huge plus to live in a warm climate. And you do feel it, you do feel the difference in your body and in your attitude. Like, I don't get depressed when the weather's not good, but I'm definitely not as happy as when the weather is good. And then I'm not quite of the age where my joints hurt. You know, I'm getting there, I'm not that far off. It does make a difference living in a hot climate or in a warmer climate. Your body just feels better, it moves easier. And especially if you are later in your life, I mean, those things can make a big difference to you. I know when my parents visit here, they tell me, they do feel better in their bodies. Just after a week of being here, you don't have the dampness 
that you do. Yes, it can be a bit humid. Yes, it can be a bit windy sometimes. It sometimes impacts the flights. But overall, you get blue skies. And if one part of the island isn't so good, there's always another part. Like I said, the microclimates make a big difference on this island. So weather is definitely one of the huge pros of living in Madeira. OK, next up. Don't know what, I'm not going to count the numbers. I'm just going to give them to you. Next up is the community or the sense of community. Now, for me, I come from a very small island in the Channel Islands where the community is very strong and the sense of community is very strong. You go out and you know almost everyone. And whilst you don't get that here, the island, and Funchal especially, it's small enough that you do start to get to know people. You know, the coffee shops, they know you by name, they know what you order, they'll wave at you as you walk past. There is a sense of community here. People are incredibly friendly here. They're welcoming. You know, they're used to tourists as well, so they're hospitable towards you. There's no resentment there. Sometimes you feel like, as a tourist or as maybe even an expat, maybe you feel like you're outside. I don't feel that here. I think it depends on your situation, of course. There are some barriers about being an expat in the place. But overall, it is very welcoming and becoming more and more welcoming. And if you are a remote worker or a digital nomad, there is a big digital nomad community here. And they really are a driver for a lot of social events, a lot of networking, a lot of opportunities. There is so much going on in the digital nomad community. There's WhatsApp groups where you can join different activities and lunches and meals and things and hiking and whatever, everything. You, it's very easy to meet people here. It's really not hard, whether you're meeting a local or whether you're meeting a digital nomad or an expat. Uh, you're really not going to struggle to meet people and make friends. If you make an effort, you'll be rewarded. Of course, if you just stay at home and do nothing, or you live in the middle of nowhere and just stay there, then you're going to struggle a little bit. But in general, the community and the friendliness and the, that sense of community, you don't get that in big cities. I didn't get that in Bangkok. I didn't get that in London. It's one of the things I love about this place. All right, next, safety. And it is very, very safe here. I mean, I can't remember ever having worried about my personal safety or the safety about my belongings. I mean, I'm in the center of Funchal, right? I'm walking along. I don't have to worry about my bag. I don't have to worry about my pockets, my phone. I have never had a problem with that. And I'm not going to say it doesn't happen, because that's not realistic. Crime obviously happens everywhere. But it's really not something you have to worry about, really, in Madeira. Like I have in other places. I mean, Thailand was the same. I don't have to worry about it there. I didn't have to worry about it where I grew up. But I remember being in places like Athens, where I was scared to blink because, I, you know, you can see the pickpockets waiting for you as you're walking past. You don't have that here. You have that sense of safety. You can relax. You can enjoy yourself. And whether that's important to you or not, it's something that's important to me. You don't need that extra anxiety, right? All right, what would I call this one? I might call it cultural richness. Madeira is full of cultural richness, whether that's the food, the history, the traditions, the festivals. There are festivals everywhere, always going on, whether that's in Funchal, the main city, you know, the flower festival, or whether that's in the little villages, the cherry festival at Cherry Harvest. There is always something going on, no matter where you are on the island. And I absolutely love that. Spain is renowned for its festivals, for everything that's going on. And it is the same here. You don't think of it so much in Portugal, but it is definitely the same. And for me, that layer of culture is what really makes a place, right? And I've been to some of these festivals in the little villages. You know, there's food cooking, there's people having fun, there's music going. The traditional music here is quite cool. I'm sure we'll, we'll get to some of that on the channel. But I just love it. It's just another depth, another, another thing to add to the list, and something that Madeira does really, really well. What I've learned is, if they do something, they do it to their best. And whether that's the New Year's fireworks, which are absolutely insane, or something like the Flower Festival or the Rally, whatever it is, they do it to their best of their ability. And they spend money on it. So uh, it's a pretty good place to be. All right, last of the main ones that I want to cover, and that is the food. The food here, whilst it might not be the best food you've ever had in the world, it is honest, it is simple, it is delicious, it is local. I mean, the fruit and the veg, the fruit and the veg are amazing here. It's not a little bit of flickering, but the fruit and the veg are amazing here, tropical fruits. Most of them from the island, to be honest, and that really does increase the flavor. But the food traditions, the espetada, which is uh, meat skewers cooked over f charcoal and fire, whether it's the fish, where an island, of course, you get great fish here, tuna, amazing tuna, or things like the garlic flatbread, the bolo de caco, 
the tropical fruit, as I said, the sweets, the desserts. There is so much going on here. We're going to have an amazing time exploring the food of this island. And you know, guys, I love to eat and I love to show you the food. So that's one of the main reasons why I'm here. If the food isn't good, I'm not going to be living somewhere, let's be honest. All right, now onto a few of the maybe more boring but practical things, things that are important if you're living somewhere. And let's start with transport. If you've got a car, the roads are good all over the island. Good quality roads, highways, fast, tunnels through the mountains, really don't need to have a concern at all, I would say. If you don't have a car, there is a public bus, very good public bus, cheap public bus, and that public bus doesn't only run in the city of Funchal, it runs all over the island. Yes, OK, it will take time, it's not quite the same as having a car, of course, but it is there for you, so you're not forced to have a car. I'd recommend it, but you're not stranded, let's say that. And that goes for the same if you live further out in the countryside, you can get in on those public buses or on the cars. Nowhere is that far. I think from Funchal, the furthest you can go is probably 40 minutes away and you're on the end of the island. The second thing would be healthcare. And that's pretty important when you live somewhere. And the healthcare system is decent here. It's good. I wouldn't say it's world class, because it's a small island. But it is good and pretty easy to get into. And I guess that's the same. Like, residency options are pretty easy as well nowadays. There's so many options. There's so many options. I'm here on an Italian passport, but whether you're a digital nomad or a retired, or retired, not retired worker, <laughs> or you're retired, or whatever you want to do, there is an option for you to live here. Once you get that, healthcare is easy. There's also a private doctor that you can go to and pay to get into. It's not really that expensive, especially if you have insurance. And uh, yeah, I've never had a problem. I have seen the doctor a couple of times since I've been here, and I've never had a problem. Now, I said the uh, fruit and veg is amazing here and all local. We're in the local or the central fruit and veg market and it is market day with the local farmers here selling their produce. But I think that will be it from the pros of living in Madeira and the reasons why I lived here. I could go on and on and on. There are so many, but uh, probably won't make for a great video. So has that convinced you? Do you now want to move here? Well, let me give you some of the cons and let me try and put you off. All right, before I get on to the cons, I just want to bring you to a place that shows you Madeira is changing, and changing for the better, actually. People are trying new things and trying to, you know, just cool things that are happening here. Just have to walk through this place, Arazem de Mercado. This is pretty cool. I like this, I like this style a lot. But down here, there is a little cafe. I, I can't escape Asia that fast, right? I have to try something that reminds me of. And there's a place that has opened here that is selling boba tea or bubble tea. So I thought we'd get a cup. We try it out. First time, I haven't tried it actually. It's called boba and chill. So let's, uh, let's check it out, see how it is. Having been in Taiwan, high expectations, right? <laughs> so uh, this is it. Uh, which one do you recommend? Do you want something milky or something summery, refreshing? And I'm thinking and milky. Lighter. Yeah, I mean, the one I liked, the one I had in Asia, was the brown sugar. Brown sugar's good. Brown sugar's good. A man after my own heart. That's what I was thinking. So if that's the recommendation, that's what we'll go with. Now, this isn't a food video, but we're here, and I may as well tell you, have your choice of milk teas or fruit teas, all sorts of flavors, as you heard, we went with the, the brown sugar. And then you can choose, if you want to, you can choose your toppings or your tapioca pearls because bubble tea obviously comes with the bubbles and they are tapioca pearls. Have not had one of these for a long, long time. So I can't wait. And then we'll get onto the cons of living in Madeira. All right, I've got it. Looks pretty good, I must admit. Looks legit. You can see the jelly bubbles in the bottom. All right, let's crack into it. There we go. How good is it? Oh, yeah. Mmm. Okay, that's good. I was a bit worried that the tea wouldn't be so strong, but he's made it pretty strong. And, you know, and then you get the sweetness of the, uh, of the brown sugar, which is so good. It's like bitterness and sweetness in there. And then those, those jelly bubbles, and they're not bubbles, they're tapioca pearls, but they come up the thick straw and into your mouth and you chew them. Little chewy pops of goodness. Love it. Anyway, on to the cons of living in Madeira. And the first one 
you'll say, uh, yeah, obviously, Joe, is that Madeira is an island. Oh, yeah, obviously, Joe. But what that means is there is, well, for some people, you might feel a little bit isolated. Despite having so much going on here, so many things to do, you are on a little island in the middle of nowhere. Flights have got more and more expensive because so many people want to come here and you're limited by having a small airport. So the flight prices have gone up. To get to Lisbon can be okay, but to, you know, there are connections. You can get to London, you can get to Munich, you can get to Lisbon, you can get to Madrid, but it doesn't fly everywhere. In most cases, you're going to need to stop somewhere. And, well, it's seasonal, so in most of the year, it can be pretty damn expensive. And I've certainly started to feel that. I've started to feel a little bit restricted or like I can't just escape. You know, when I live near Heathrow, I could just jump on a flight to anywhere fairly cheaply. Same in Asia, in Bangkok. You can jump on a flight to anywhere in Asia really cheaply. You don't have that here. And after a little while, you might start to feel a bit isolated. I guess the solution to that is to plan ahead and get the flights. But if you're bound by kids or work or whatever it is, or you just want to travel a lot, like I have been doing, then, yeah, it can definitely be a bit of a problem, I would say. And because it's so popular, or become more popular, I would say, and it's definitely become popular since I started coming here five, six years ago, things have got more expensive. Rents have gone up. <laughs> I mean, what has got more expensive anyway? But rental prices, my God, rental prices. If you want to live in Funchal, you're paying a lot more today than you were in, well, a few years ago, let's say added to the fact that so many people are trying to find things, it's really difficult to find good quality, good value accommodation. How do I say it? If you're a landlord, you're going to want to maximise what you can earn, so I get it, but there has to be some sort of control to that. You can't just charge crazy, crazy things, and they do. Um, so it is difficult and you will struggle, but once you find a good place, obviously you're going to want to try and hold on to it but uh, it's definitely something to think about. Thank God I found somewhere where that's decent. But uh, yeah, prices and food prices. Look, we live on an island or this is an island. Everything has to be imported. It has to get here somehow. There's not a huge amount of competition. It's not like, it's not like England where you have five different supermarkets competing with each other for prices. Uh, you are kind of at the whim of two who I think maybe don't always work together. Sorry, they work together on prices. They don't work against each other on prices, let's say. So, uh, yeah. It's part and parcel of living on an island. It is what it is. There's not much... There's not much you can do about it, but it's probably worth being aware of it. OK. The other obvious one is language. And this probably could have gone in the pros, if I think about it, because you do not need to speak Portuguese to get by here. So many people speak English, not just English, German, French, Spanish. There is a lot of Spanish here because there are so many Venezuelans here. But you are living in another place and I think you have a responsibility to try and learn the language. If you really want to try and get under the cover of a place that you're living, speaking the language is a big benefit. So you, it's in the cons because you're living abroad, right? You're gonna have to try and put time and effort into learning another language and that's not for everyone. Maybe when you get into some of the more bureaucratic stuff, it will also help you too. It's not a blocker for sure, but it is useful having someone who can speak Portuguese with you. So I'm sticking it in the cons. But to be honest, the challenge of learning a language for most people is probably a good thing. Next up, jobs. I would say this is not a good place to come if you're looking to work in Madeira. Wages are low, job opportunities are limited. If you're coming here, you're going to want to be coming here with a remote job, or if you're retired, or <laughs> if you're coming on holiday, so you don't need to worry about a job. But if you're looking for local job options, it's not the best. I think that's the best way of putting it. And I maybe would look elsewhere, let's say that. All right, as I walk through the old town, beaches. If you're a beach person, Madeira, might be a struggle for you because, well, there are two man-made beaches, but they, you don't have the golden, amazing golden sands that you have in other places, in Spain or mainland Portugal, or other island destinations. You just don't have it. Now, you do have access to the sea, of course. We're an island. There are loads of cool places to swim. I love it. And I've got used to it. You have the saltwater pools and direct access to the sea. And I like it because I've learned that not getting sandy 
is actually quite a good thing, I would say. But if you are a beach person and you love sunning yourself on the golden sand, maybe, maybe Madeira is not for you. One thing I have struggled with since coming here is the fact that because it is a popular tourist destination, because there are a lot of digital nomads and remote workers, everything is very transitional here, let's say. You meet nice people, you make friends, and then you say, oh, how long are you staying? Oh, I'm just here for three weeks, I'm just here a week. Whatever it may be, it is easy to meet people, it's difficult to make long-term friends. And I don't know if that's a problem, it doesn't make me want to leave, but it's definitely something to think about. If you need that around you, if you don't have that, then maybe, maybe, well, you're not, it's not the wrong place, but you're going to have to work a bit harder to do it. I'm okay, I like my own space, I like being independent, I like being on my own, but it's definitely something that has frustrated me a little bit in the months that I've been here already. And I think it's worth calling that out, because it's not something you tend to think of when you move to a place. I'm actually gonna add a subsection for food here, <laughs> because things are changing, like I said. You saw the boba tea, there's Asian places popping up, there's Thai restaurants popping up. The boba tea was good, let me say that. Portuguese food is good here, but I personally feel, oh, get out of the way, as the uh, fireman goes past, I personally feel sometimes a little bit restricted. If I want something good from another cuisine, I often have to make it myself. But even the accessibility to ingredients, whilst getting better, as more people from different places are here and demand it, supermarkets are stocking different things, or you have smaller shops selling Asian products or Indian products, whatever it may be. The diversity of food isn't quite there yet. It is behind. Things are changing, like I said, but it's not quite there yet. And I haven't got bored of it, because I cook, I love cooking. But uh, yeah, it's not quite the same as shopping maybe in America or shopping in the, in, in the UK where you can get access to absolutely everything you could want for cooking or for eating. But maybe I'm only thinking of London because I lived in London. If I lived in a little village or a little town elsewhere in England, maybe I wouldn't have that luxury anyway. But uh, it's definitely something I've noticed here. All right, two last things I'm gonna call out. One, and it could be a good thing or a bad thing, I guess, but a lot of stuff here feels like, sometimes, as you would expect in a small place, is a little bit of who you know, not what you know. That's kind of how some things get done. And I think that's just a fact of life. It happens in a lot of places. But if you don't know who to know, sometimes you struggle a bit until you find the person who you should know. <laughs> if you see what I mean. So there's a little bit of that. And that can be a little bit frustrating sometimes, but again, it's part of living in a foreign place, in another place, in a small place. And uh, yeah, you just got to kind of roll with that. Not, I think what is important is maybe saying that, and a lot of these cons is you can't expect to come and live in a foreign place with different cultures, different customs, different traditions, different way of doing things, and expect them to change for you because, oh, that's how I've always done it, that's how it works at home. You have to conform and change to them. I'm the one choosing to live here, you're the one choosing to live here or potentially thinking about choosing to live here. We forget that sometimes, and it's important to remember that. With all of these things, these are not complaints. I'm just calling out so you, uh, you guys know. Anyway, the last one, the boring one can't end on an exciting one, can we? So the last one would be the healthcare. You're going to need medical insurance, I would say, even if you have access to the free healthcare. You're going to need medical insurance, and we're on an island. Whilst it's good, it's not world class. For some things, maybe you have to go to the mainland. Uh, but I think that's pretty rare, to be honest. So yeah, they're my pros, and they're my cons, and the reasons why I moved to Madeira. One last question we're gonna answer is, what does it mean for the channel? And what are my travel plans? Well, yes, what does living here mean for the channel? And I've got myself some wheels. What do you reckon? Meet Kenzie, my little Honda monkey that I'm very proud of. And it's gonna give me the access, the, the potential to get out and explore this island. So let's go and tell you what that means. Let's do that over some food. Of course, if I'm coming for a quick, simple, delicious, good value lunch, I'm coming to Snack Bar Bella 5, right? just off the old town. And would you look at that? I have a prego 
and fries here waiting for me. This is one of the unique, well, maybe not unique, but one of the traditional dishes here in Madeira. Think of it like a steak sandwich. This is the special version. It's got salad, cheese, the steak in the garlic flatbread, the bowl of the cackle, and of course, these amazing homemade fries. Everything cooked here, prepared for us. Uh, yeah, it's my go-to place. One, you can have that as, a, as another pro. You have amazing places like this, and it's my, the main tip from this video, come and eat at this place, should be your first thing that you do when you get to Madeira. And this encapsulates what I mean about sense of community. Obviously, I eat here a lot. They know my order, they know my drink. If I have this fish, they know how to cook it. If I have that fish, they know how to cook it. Love it, absolutely love it. Anyway, put you guys down. I'll tell you a little bit about my clans here. Well, actually, first, we should try the prego, shouldn't we? Find a way to pick it up. It's huge. You can find prego all over the island, but uh, there's definitely a quality difference. This is one of the best, one of my favorites. You can see how juicy it is. So good. One of the best lunches you can have. Come on, steak sandwich and fries. Anyway, I have, of course, made videos here before in this restaurant. It's one of my favorites. But now we live here, we are going to explore so much of this island. The best places to eat. My favorite places to eat, yes, but new places. We're going to explore. We're gonna to explore together. We're gonna to find the best things to do, the hiking. We're gonna do as many things as we can, and I really want to go all in to really make this channel the number one place to watch, or the number one channel to watch before you live here, before you come here, before you visit here. And sure, I have my ideas of what I wanna show you, but I want you guys to tell me too, where should I film, what do you want to see? Leave it in the comments, message me, find me on Instagram. If you're not finding me on Instagram, why haven't you? Get all the behind the scenes stuff. But yeah, the whole point of waiting to get more up to date is so we can bounce off each other and create ideas for each other and uh, make content in that way. If you did follow me and you watch me for Asia content, do not fear, there will be more content. We're still a channel that travels. I do have a plan to go to Asia. There'll probably be some Vietnam content coming up and let's see what else happens. But I do have a plan to go there and visit. I also have another cruise coming up, which I'm really excited for. One of the newest, biggest, most impressive cruise ships. That's also gonna come up on the channel. But Madeira is gonna be my base for everything. And I cannot wait to explore this island with you guys. So please, if you're not subscribed and you're watching this for the first time, please do subscribe, follow me, turn the notifications on, and let's explore Madeira and the rest of Europe and back into Asia, of course, together for the best food, the best things to do, and little, well, it's not so secret anymore, but places like this, let's find them together. I hope this video has been helpful. Whether you're looking to move here, you're already here, or you just want to know a little bit more about me, which I doubt, but you never know. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this video. I will see you guys in the next one, probably on a little food tour around Funchal. See you then. Bye.